Hello everyone, my name is Confident and in this video we are going to take a look at the app's mint context object. We are going to see its properties such as the store object, the URL object, the user object and the mode object. And I'm going to show you practical use cases for each of these properties in real world applications. So for us to get started, I am going to head over to the widget section and bring in um, a button widget and also a text widget. The first property we'll be looking at is the store object and this can be accessed by typing appsmith dot store and right there we are accessing the store object and we can see that in the evaluated value pane we have an object um, the only problem right now is that it is currently empty because we do not have anything stored in the local store of our application so for us to have something stored in the application i'm going to configure the submit button such that whenever it is clicked we actually have an access stored in the local store so to do that i'm going to say store value and the key is going to be artist and for its value, this will be Adele. All right, so whenever the button is clicked, we are going to have Adele as an artist stored in the local store. So I'm going to click on this, and we can see that we have Adele stored in the local store. So we can go on to access the artist by typing appsmith.store.artist. And right here, we have Adele showing up. So this is one way in which you can store data in your application. And to show you that this is actually persisted, I am going to reload the browser and you would see that we still have that value showing up. And you can see we still have Adele showing up. So this is a great way to store data within your application. The next property we have is the user property and this can be accessed by typing appsmith.user. This object shows information about the currently authenticated user or the currently logged in user. And we can see that in the evaluated value pane, we have information about the currently logged in user, which in this case is myself. We have the name, we have the email, and a lot of other properties about that user in the user object. So for example, we can display the user's name by typing absent.user.name. And we have the currently logged in user's name showing up in the application. So this can be very useful in displaying information about the currently logged in user in your application, or it can also be used to configure permissions within the application. So to show you what I mean, I am going to bring in a container widget. And within this container widget, I'm going to have um, a section of our application. So I'm going to have a table widget within it. And I'm also going to have a video widget within it. So right now we have a section of our application that has a table widget and a video widget. But what if we do not want this section of our application to be shown to all users? We only want people from our company or with a certain type of information to be able to view this application. So what you can do in such case is to configure the container widget to only be visible whenever a certain type of user is logged in. So for this example, I only want users with a certain type of email to be able to view this section of the application. So to do that, I am going to say appsmith.user.email and doing that, we can see the email of the currently logged in user. So I can say if the email includes the apps new domain, we want that user to be able to view this section of the application. If not, do not show this up. So we can say appsmith.user.email.includes at appsmith.com. So if the user's email includes at appsmith.com, we want this section of the application to be visible. If not, this section will be hidden. So we can go ahead to deploy this. And because I'm logged in, as you can see here, I'm logged in with an AppSmith um, email. We have this section visible to me, but opening up this application in an incognito window, I should not have that showing up. So I'm going to open this up in an incognito window. And we can see that we have other parts of the application visible. I can see the submit button and I can also see the text um, widget, but I do not have the table and the video widget showing up because I'm not logged in to my AppSmith account. You can see I don't have a currently logged in user. So this is one way in which you can use the user object to set custom permissions within your application. The next property we have is the URL object, and this contains information about the current URL that the browser is in. So to access that, you can access it by typing appsmith.url. And taking a look at uh, the object, we can see that we have quite a number of properties. We have the full path, we have the host, we have the host name, we have query parameters, protocol, ports, and hash. 
and these can be used to build complex flows in your application. So to show you one way in which you can use this, you can use the query parameters property to read value coming from the query parameters on the URL. Um, so to show you how that would work, um, right now in the application, I have two pages. I have a home page and I have the artist page. And taking a look at the artist page, you can see that I have a table which displays artist information. Uh, the data shown on this table is coming from the get artist API endpoint. And uh, we can see right here, we are passing the artist name, which is shown on the table. What we can do is that we can configure the application such that the name of the artist is actually coming from the previous page. And we can pass that information from the home page to the artist page by using the query parameters. So right here, I can access the value by typing appsmith.url dot query parameters and then i'm going to be placing this in the artist query parameter so i'm going to say artist and because this is undefined right now because we do not have any artist query parameters i can set a default value so that we have things going okay so running this should give us our default results then what we can do is to go back to the home page and we can configure the submit button such that whenever it is clicked on, we navigate to the artist page and then pass an artist along as a query parameters. So we can say navigate to, then the name of the page we want to navigate to, which in this case is the artist page. And then what we want to do is to pass along an artist query parameter. So we can say artist. And then the name of the artist we want to pass across, which in this case is Adele. And then we can deploy this application so that we can take a look at it. And right here in the deployed application, we have two pages, which is the artist page and the home page. And right now in the artist page, we have Sia showing up, which is the default artist. Then going back to the home page and clicking on the button would take us to the um, artist page and then pass along Adele as an artist and on the table we can see Adele showing up. So this is one way in which you can pass data from one page to another page within AppSmith. The next property we have is the mode property and this specifies what mode the application is on. So it can be accessed using appsmith.mode and we have two modes which is the edit mode which I am on right now and I'm deploying this we have the publish mode, which is the deployed version of the application. So this object specifies what mode the application is on. And one use case of this would be to hide certain things you want to be visible in one mode of the application. Say for example, you have a section of the application you are working on and you do not want it to be visible on the um, published mode. You can set that using the mode object. So for example, I'm going to bring in a container widget. And within this container widget, I'm going to place in a couple of widgets I am working on. And we can see that this is very messy because I am still working on this. Uh, this particular section of the application is still a work in progress. But I do not want it such that when this application is deployed, users get to see this section of the application I'm working on. So what I can do is to head over to the visibility of the container widget. And I can say, if the appsmith.mode is equal to edit, if the mode is edit, I want this to be visible. But if the mode is something else, which is the published mode, I don't want it to be visible. So I'm going to deploy this. And in the deployed application, we still have the artist page, we have the home page with the button widget and the text widget. But we see that we do not have. Um, the section I'm currently working on showing up to the users. So this is really useful if you have um, a part of the application you're working on and you don't want that section to be visible to users. So you can use the mode object for that. So these are the properties that are available within the AppSmith context object. And I'm sure you're going to build fun applications using these properties. This will be all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.